up, you are watching Power Up. This is an acronym for playing, watching, reading. Trisha and I will usually talk about what we are currently playing, watching, reading, but it is guest week. And our guest today is the wonderful William Haynes, who you know as both of our ex co hosts on Sourcebed, who's doing William Haynes TV at the moment. But we're asking him to unleash his little nerdy side. And you are apparently playing Pokemon. Yes. Okay. So I don't play video games. I like watch people play video games. You do. Uh, correction. You do sometimes play video games. Will I have seen it with my own eyeballs? <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's been like I've taken. A, I used to play video games, uh, especially when I was younger. But like over the past couple of years, I don't know. Ever since I started like watching Steve play them or watching other people play them, I watched them. So like. I don't, I cannot tell you why, but I have been watching these three hour long videos of people beating Pokemon with like the worst characters. Three <laughs> hours. I feel like I'm playing the game. Cause like, you know, like Magic Carp and Pokemon can't do anything. All he can do is splash. Yeah. And if you use up all of the splash, you get 25 times you get to use splash, he gets a flail, which inflicts damage onto the enemy and yourself. And in like generation one, it's a different percentage. So these guys are so good at the game that they will train their magic cart uh, uh, and beat the entire game, beat the elite four, and with, with a magic cart using flail and struggle. <laughs> Whoa! So can I really I ask was, Will, as someone that's not a Pokemon's, uh, which Pokemon game do you like playing? Is it one of the video games? If so, which one? Is it tabletop Pokemon? Okay, so I really like the originals. I probably played like the first three generations of Pokemon religiously. Uh, but they're all, yeah, they're all good. But they just like yellow, like blue, red, like all the way to silver, gold. Uh, those are all good. But they just remade it, bringing up Steve again. Steve, having played that the Pokemon game that they remade, the original ones where you can like see all the Pokemon around you. And you can add in a character on it on the Switch, and it's a remake of the original, and it's so fun. Okay. Chat can probably tell us before I start Googling. Everybody talked about it for a while a year ago, uh, and uh, it's just like the original game. They remade it to a T, but now you can see the Pokemon and everything. And let's you go can, Pikachu and let's go Eevee. Yeah, and you can add on a character too, like your side character to like be there with you, who's like your friend, like you know your little your little cousin who can't really play. So your, your little person can feel like they're playing too, but they don't really affect your game, oh. and that was me. So I was like, yeah, this is, the people who make it are brilliant. And just to add on, I recently found out that Pokemon is the biggest franchise of, I think, all time. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is the, the most profitable uh, uh, like brand. And it makes sense to me because it's so worldwide loved, and no matter what language you speak, you can look at this and understand it. Okay, I now, now the best-selling video game franchise is Pokemon, with a revenue of about ninety billion dollars. Heck to the yes! Heck to the yes! So, Will, how did you first get into Pokemon? Uh, I first got into Pokemon. Ooh, I can't even remember. Like, it was heavily marketed to my age group. So I remember watching it, the anime, as, as as young as I possibly could be. And we were all obsessed with it. Like, it was the biggest deal then, and it somehow is still the biggest deal now. And when I was on the IGN show, I got to go to the, uh, the Pokemon convention, the Pokemon battles. So they had every type of battle, the car battle, every video game battle, the new game that I hadn't even seen yet battle. And the energy there was phenomenal. It was like, we're all from all over the world and we're all coming together because of how much we love these fake creatures. Mm -hmm. And it really warmed my heart. And it, it, even though, like you just said, they're like $90 billion, it's for mm -hmm. some reason doesn't come across as a, it still comes across as a heartwarming, touching brand for some reason. Remember how we all collectively lost our shit when Pokemon Go came out and every single lunchtime we would all just do circuit destroyers. Yes. Yeah. Yes. People, that was in the middle of the 2016 election and people, I don't, I haven't seen it since and <laughs> we can't do it now because of the pandemic, but people lost their mind off of Pokemon Go. I hatched three eggs today. <laughs> You're still playing? Today? Because, because um, I will walk 
further or in new different places or like if I was going to duck out with Zelda for 10 minutes, that 10 can turn into half an hour <laughs> if it means that I can hatch an egg or, you know, go to walk to a nearby gym and take it over. So oh it actually gosh. helps my health in a way. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, I, I believe in it. I thought that that was a brilliant idea. Um, but I remember then they changed something about it that you can't do and then a lot of people were turned off by it. Uh, it's not as free as it used to be, but yeah, I think that that's brilliant. I, mean, I wish we lived in that world. <laughs> kudos to Mod for that dedication. And there's a couple of people in chat, like Spencer Dam says, "I'm still playing." LOL. So there's people mm -hmm. out there, Mod. Well, I don't um, have the Apple Fitness Watch, do I? No Fitbit telling me to keep kicking my own butt, so I may it. as well play some Pokemon. Do it, you. Will. So as a non-Pokemon's, and for anyone who is watching or listening to this, who is not into Pokemon, but wants to get into Pokemon, what do you recommend they start with? Ooh, 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 that's a good question. I feel like they're all so easy. I really, if you have the Switch, get the remake because it's really a lot of fun and it's exactly like the old game. Uh, and, it, and, it, and it's just way better graphics. So yeah, I would say start, if you have a Switch, start with that. But like they're all, even I watching the footage from like the new games, the new games are still exactly like what we were, we were making. Yeah. They somehow are still making the exact same thing. So you really could pick up any Pokemon game. And I mean, you're going to have to invest a lot of time. But uh, I wish it was like as screenshotable as uh, uh, Animal Crossing. I, I, I wish it was as personalized as that and you can see people playing it how you see people on Twitter playing Animal Crossing. But yeah, I'd say you could pick up any Pokemon game and go. The one on the Switch is the only one that I haven't gotten, I don't think. My last one was for the 3DS and I liked what they did with the 3DS, but I only played it for about five or so hours, 10 hours. What is like the title of the one on the Switch? Is it Moon and Shield? Eevee and it's like, uh, go? Eevee. So, and Moon, Sword and Shield. Oh, I think Sword and Shield was that one, and then which I believe I got Sword. So my last one was Sword, but I didn't get Pikachu or Eevee. And if I would, I would get Eevee, which takes me to my next question: What is your favorite Pokemon of all time? Oh, I actually have been thinking about that a lot lately. I I love them all. The Mewtwo. Uh, I feel like it, I, it's a cheat when I say Mewtwo, but it's it's that quote that you see on caption where Me Too said, he has this really deep line. And I think, I, I'm not sure if it's from the English version with the caption or the Japanese version with the translation. And he says something along the lines of like, you know, it, it turns out all of, after all, we were all like, you know, uh, we were all the same or something like that. Me Too it hits you with so many deep philosophical lines. I mean, cause he's one of two Pokemon that can talk. So I, I gotta say, Mewtwo is my bro. I like in my fantasy, I like to believe I would be the only human he would talk to. Uh, but if Pokemon was real, this is the quote: "I see now that the circumstances of one's birth are irrelevant. It is what you do with the gift of life that determines who you are." <laughs> Ooh. I love that so much. I, <laughs> I was like, man, Mewtwo's he's spinning some game. But if we were like talking about it in the Pokemon were real, and I was like, all right, I have to get my one. It's probably like Vulpix. Oh. Uh, the little fox, you know, he turns into the nine tails. Like, you know, uh, I, I love Vulpix. He's the cutest. But also. Brock would ride Growlithe as well. Who? Brock would ride Growlithe, I'm pretty sure, in the comics. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I love all the ones that, like, all the OG Fire Pokemon are so cute. Growlithe and all of them. But then also uh, Haunter or. Uh, or, or Gengar, like they're like, they're, they like, they prank people and stuff and they lick people. And lick tongue, licky tongue. Like the, yeah. oh, there is a licky tongue in there. Oh, but yeah. it, it's lick. My, my Pokemon selection would be ridiculous. I would have the funniest ones, honestly. All the funny ones, even Mr. Mime, they'd be like, oh shoot, Will's bringing out Mr. Mime. <laughs> I'd be like, I would be dying laughing. I actually like the Pokemon movie too that came out. The, the one, the, what, the first one in 1995 or the actual, uh, the, the, the the Detective Pikachu, where the Pokemon are really realistic looking. Actually, yeah, the Harry Pikachu movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish it was Danny DeVito, but uh, <laughs> it was still good. Uh, I remember yeah. covering that story for SourceFed. I remember that. that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That was a. That is what William Haynes has been playing for PWR. We will move into watching next. So don't go anywhere. Before Ooh. we do that, we're going to go to Bombs Away Q&A. Oh, Amy, what away. you got for us? 
Okay, that's what we'll do. <laughs> I am. So, so, forgot. Totally forgot, babe. That's all totally right. Forgot. That's all right. But you got some bomb um, away questions for us. Yes. So this one is actually from our Patreon, geekbomb. No, other way. Patreon.com slash geekbomb. <laughs> um, this one's from Efrain Pasantes. I will be getting one live right now from Twitch. So get your questions in for Will. Uh, Efrain asks, what was something you wish the producers would let you film back at SourceFed? That. Ooh, interesting. Oh. <sighs> Quick answer. <laughs> I had a lot of things that never got to happen. You, Trisha, what was that show that I, I think it was like a pilot that never ended up happening, but I always remember it was this really crazy set of you and Steve and it was like all this stuff, but I think it ended up being too difficult to do. But I always remember seeing that and being like, what is that? A show you that know? you and me and Steve were gonna do together? It was just you and Steve. I think it was before I was on the show. It was oh, like was it Comfort Zone? I don't I don't know if the show ever came out, but I remember the set looked really like crazy. It would like had a lot of stuff on it. It was like boxes. You don't remember? I don't remember. Steve and I made so many pilots that never yeah. saw the light of day. Um, that's what, I'm that's what of. I was trying to remember if we did one specifically with you, me and Steve. And I don't remember something with a lot of boxes on it. What we tried to oh, oh, was it the toy show? We tried to do a toy review show. Did that ever happen? That might, that might have been it. I may, it must have been toy related. Someone has this file. I'll find it. And I think that might have been it. Yeah, it was yeah. like a. So I forget what we titled it, but it was something yeah. like what what are you, what are you playing with or something like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I honestly really got to do everything I wanted to do, but I was really sad when they canceled this show I had called Barely Bored, which was uh, it was kind of like table talk, but it was heavily about. Uh, uh, getting stuff from the audience. It was like we were taking in Snapchats, we were taking in videos, and also talking about news. And we only got to film a couple episodes of it, and they did end up going out. And I remember I had, I had you on at Trisha, but I think the issue was mm -hmm. that we were using people's videos that they sent, and they were worried that they were going to get taken down. Yeah. And that's actually why they ended up taking down uh, all of the Anime Club episodes, uh, because oh. we got all of the reviews that we would put at the end. And oh. I was like, are you guys being crazy? Like, they, 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 they know, they know, they know. <laughs> They know they put their then the weebs the anime weebs are not going to be like hey man, I'm embarrassed that you have me talking about Yu Yu Hakusho. So I was always really upset that they took down all of our anime clubs because of that. But yeah, I got to make it everything I wanted to make. You got to do a lot of fun stuff. It was funny, Will, when you were saying that like you know almost none of your jokes got held back. I feel it, like that was a. a something that happened over time because at least in the beginning of source value granted they were just still trying to figure out what it was but in the beginning it was like you can't do that you can't do that like lee and steve almost got fired over benjamin franklin time traveler so many Whoa. times Whoa. Yeah. Legit. well i can 100 percent credit that to jeremy uh like you know jeremy acevedo like you know when you're the boss at the time everybody wants to be mad at you for whatever for whatever but the one thing that i will always appreciate jeremy for is that he never told me no he was always like all right do do more go ahead do crazy shit. <laughs> so i i i that was 100 percent because jeremy was the producer at the time he was like go ahead and do whatever <laughs> But I don't think you worked under him, Trisha. But I him. did for just like a little bit, though. I worked with Jeremy for about six months. Oh, yeah. I, I, I mean, I always joke about this uh, to Steve in person. But like when Jeremy came in, like he was like, all right, I'm going to designate not to the audience, but behind the scenes, different producers of the channel. He was like, these are going to be the two producers of the channel. And he had Steve and you. And I still clown Steve to this day. I'm like, Steve, you can't manage shit. <laughs> Well, but, you know why it was me and Steve? Because yeah. Jeremy was like, it's going to be Steve. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was and like, I, cool. Who does all the work, though? Yeah. I was like, you can make it Steve, but nothing's going to get done. He became the creative mind, and then you ran, like, the business side of right. the channel. And poor Steve was like, I don't want to do it. I don't want yeah. to do it. That sounds like work. I don't want to do it. it I know. Really so I came in and after like five weeks, I sat him down and I was like, hey, I heard your channel manager and that you don't want to do it. And he's like, no. I'm like, can I do it? And he's like, yes. And I was like, okay. And I'm going to clown Steve on that. And tried to actually earn the money for doing it for two, uh, what, a year before I quit. And that's why. 
I'm a clown Steve on that because over like the past two or three years, he has 100% changed that. I always, I clowned him from that from 2015 to probably 2017, 2018, 2019. And then now, uh, every time I'm seeing him, he's he's doing all of the, the this producing stuff. Like, and I, I and I clown him all the time. I'm like, Steve, I'm like, when did you become? I always I've said this to Steve like ten times. I'm like, when did you become the person who is uh, figuring things out? Like, I, I've always looked at Steve as just a pure host. But within the past two years, he's turned it around. But back in the day, huh? yeah, he he really has grown. And I, I don't I don't think people know about that behind the scenes. Like. I'm like Steve. You're like you're 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 being a good manager, and uh, and uh, but we just look at him as a goofball because when we worked with him, that's mm-hmm. what that's what he did, and that's what we did. <laughs> yeah, he actually said to me once uh, because I was stressed because there was a lot going on, uh, and he was like, "Trisha, why are you so stressed? When you have work to do, all you got to do is not do it, and someone else will do it for you." And I was like, "Steve, I'm your someone else." Yeah, <laughs> I can't doing just work. stop doing work or else no one's going to do it. I am the yeah. person that picks it up when you don't do it so that you can chill and be funny. It was yeah, very yeah. funny. It was a very funny moment. It was, it was like, very you funny. You couldn't get fired at SourceFed, huh? Like, yeah. I, I, I clowned him for years on that. I was like, manager? <laughs> but no, but seriously, within the past two years, he has turned it around. He's grown it. He's grown it. I can vouch for that too. He he yeah. runs. I've been on Valley Folk sets where he is the dude in charge, and I'm like, yeah. "All right, man, good job." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know we're Do running what? insanely over. Um, Amy, did you have a question from Twitch chat as well for Will? Yeah, uh, Primal Bubbles asks, uh, "What video game character do you relate to the most?" Ooh, there are a lot of really good video game characters, um, but relate to. The guy from Heavy Rain who's trying to find his kid, Jason. Oh <laughs> Just kidding. I love that game. It was. So fun. <laughs> I I pray that I never end up relating with him. It, the, oh, there's Alpha. The... <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, okay, let me be right here. Uh, uh, that game is so crazy because I loved it back in 2009 because it was it was a cinematic masterpiece, and now so many video games now are like finally trying to unravel their stories in in a way that makes you feel like you can decide it. But I definitely don't want to relate with him other than the fact that his house in the beginning of the game is beautiful. Uh, but I, the character I want to relate with is Nathan Drake from Uncharted. He's so freaking cool. What's cool about those games is that it's half tactical. Where's the puzzle? Like, you know, how do I climb through this and how do I do that? And then the other half is action-y, like, you know, like, uh, shoot him up. And so, like, as a person who's always felt dual, uh, it, it, if I was ever going to create something, I would want to make it like Uncharted, where you do feel like you're using your mind and using your your body. So, but as a person, who do I? Those are the ones I like. But who do I relate to? I don't know. Kratos, because he doesn't say anything to his kid the whole time. <laughs> uh, I watched Steve play the whole. Uh, uh, God of War, and I, I was like, this man is like, talk to your kid, talk to your kid, explain something to him. But it was really beautiful, and I really practiced. So I don't know if I can relate with any, I, but I do like the storytelling behind the stories. But I don't know if I can relate with any of the characters. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think that's a fair answer to the question. Thank you very much, Will, and thank you for giving us all of your wisdom and insight into Pokemon. Folks, uh, this has been the playing portion of this week's Power Up. Thanks again to William Haynes for being here. Don't go anywhere because we'll be right back with watching. 